This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you want to try out their affordable video service, use my link in the description. First 500 uses it, gets two months for free. Let's start with a no-nonsense approach. There are a couple of good reasons not to buy the Digitact. If all you want is a drum module that you sequence using your DAW or say another sequencer, then I'd say that you're spending an awful lot if you buy the Digitact. Not taking advantage of the internal sequencer would be a wasted resource. Secondly, the Digitac does not offer stereo sampling. Samples are recorded and played back in mono. The effects are, however, stereo, but if you need stereo samples, this is not it. There is limited storage and expandability, so if you want something with gigs upon gigs of storage, this is not for you. If you are primarily looking for a performance-oriented drum machine, there are other drum machines with much more hands-on control that you could check out, the TR8S for example. And if you're looking for an all-in-one solution to make full songs, this can be an interesting option, but something like an MPC Live or a Force or maybe a hybrid solution like Machina could be a better solution. And if you want to do time stretching, this ain't it. It simply can't do it. All this being said, there are many reasons why the Digitac is my most used and favorite sampler. start with an overview of what the Digitact actually is. It's an 8-voice monophonic sampler and sample player. And you have these 8 buttons here representing the 8 voices and 8 buttons down here representing the 8 MIDI channels because it's also a MIDI sequencer and you can use uh, the MIDI channels as well as the sample channels at the same time. Each of the sample tracks have a sample view where you have tuning for example, bit reduction, you can set start and, and end point of your sample as well as selecting what sample you want to use and you also have a filter section with a filter envelope and you have an amp section where you set the amp envelope as well as the delay, the reverb and the panning and overdrive. You also have one LFO per track, so each sample track has one LFO that you can set to a number of different destination. If you want to know more about this, I have a couple of other videos that I'll link down below. Each of the pages that I just showed you have secondary functions, you hold function and press either. And we can go into, for example, the delay settings, the reverb settings, or the master compressor. Another thing to note is that you can actually fine tune samples really nicely. As you can see here, in very small increments, you can fine tune them, which is very handy. The unit can also sample via this button here. You hold function and yes, and you start to recording, and you can be recording from the external inputs. So you can have a stereo source connected to the unit, but it only samples in mono. And you can also sample internally. So you could almost do like a mix down of a couple of different tracks to um, one mono track instead to, for example, uh, save up space. When you've recorded a sample, you can save it to the plus drive, the internal storage of the unit, and then you can also assign it to a track. When it's assigned to a track, it shows up here under Source, Sample, and you have a list here of samples. These samples here are located on the plus drive as well as in the RAM. So when you load the project, you load the corresponding samples into the RAM of the project. And as you can see here, you have a bunch of different slots here. The Digitact has two main effects, the delay and the reverb. These are send effects, which means that all of the eight tracks send to the same delay and the same reverb. So you can see that on each track we're sending different amounts to the reverb and the delay respectively. This means that if you do any changes to the reverb here, for example, let's uh, increase the decay here, 
it will mean that it will impact anything that you've been sending to the reverb. When you want to record a song that you've made on the Digitact, what you have to do is either record from the left and right outputs, so a stereo mix down, or you can actually multi-track using Overbridge on a computer, and I have a video on this as well. I'll link it down below. There is, however, no way here on the unit itself to do any sort of mix down to a WAV file. Well, you could technically uh, record all the eight tracks into one loop, like I described earlier. You just go in here and you select the source. So now it's the external, uh, but we're going to do internal uh, left and right. So now you could theoretically make a little a mono mix down of whatever is going on, creating a new loop, and then you could just uh, transfer that loop to the computer. But it's, it's a little annoying. It's probably easier just to do a multi-track recording using Overbridge. The Digitact also supports a 64-step sequencer. You can scroll through the different steps using the page button here. Now, these 64 steps can be expanded upon using conditional trigs, which is a part of what we'd call the electron workflow and the parameter locking that you can do with this unit. And I'll describe this more in detail later in the video. So it's a sampler and mono at that. But what makes it so beloved? I would say that the way you process samples on it makes for some truly creative explorations. You can find yourself starting with a kick sample and ending up somewhere completely different. As you can hear, you can do a lot with just a kick sound. This is because you can control the start and end points of a sample, as well as loop it forwards or backwards, or simply use the LFO to control these parameters and many more. Or why not sequence these changes with parameter locks? I have also found that using external controllers or the control all feature, which lets you impact all eight channels at once, can make for some wild sound design. Here's an example of where I go from a pre-programmed loop to some really wild territory.
this it with this sampler that makes all of this possible. Some call it parameter locks, others they call it magic, but most of us refer to it as the Electron Workflow. So everybody keeps talking about this Electron Workflow, but what is it actually? The easiest way that I've found to explain it is that you can make very precise and musical changes to your sound per step. So that's just one track with a kick drum that I made some small changes to. Let's add some more sounds and let me show you what I mean by precise and musical. And with some changes. You can also move steps in very small increments using the micro timings. And lastly, I just want to touch on conditional triggs. It basically means that you can have a certain step activate during different conditions, for example, a percentage chance. So let's see, we want to use this sound here. And we want it to come in on the last 16 steps here, but we only want it to trigger a certain percentage of the time, so maybe say 41%. So as you saw there, didn't trigger because it had a 41% chance to trigger. Now there are a bunch of different conditions and there are better videos to go and watch if you really want to get into the conditional trig stuff. But just know that it's a very, very powerful feature that can let you create some really cool stuff. However, I think you might have noticed by now that working with the dig attack is actually, it's actually very much a, a programming heavy type of workflow. Now it's very quick, it's very fast once you learn it, but you have to really learn it before it becomes something fluid and it can feel a little bit like programming something quite technical. It's not as hands-on as just tweaking the knobs on say a uh, drum brute for example. That's much quicker, more intuitive, more instant. This takes a bit of learning. Now, I wouldn't be a good reviewer if I didn't mention the fact that, yeah, you have to put in the time and really learn these devices. It's not something you pick out of, out of the box and just instantly understand. I've had a ton of friends who simply don't gel with the Electron workflow. It's very program heavy. Sure, you can use it as just a drum machine and not tweak it very much, not use the sequencer very much. But as I've said, that's really wasted resources. Get something like a drum boot impact, for example, a TR8S instead. Those are machines that lends themselves much better uh, to uh, just being like simple drum machines. Uh, this is something that you really want to get into if you buy. And I think that goes for all the Electron synths. It's not just your typical sampler drum machine or analog synth. The Electrons require a bit of effort, but it's well worth it, I would say. Now, before I talk about another major feature, the MIDI sequencer, here's a word from today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes. For example, you can learn how to brew coffee, just like I do. And you can also learn about music production, mixing, mastering, yeah, all the good stuff. If you sign up for their premium membership, you get unlimited access to all the courses, and it's only $10 a month, so it's actually quite affordable. 
Now, while this is a video about hardware sampler, maybe you want to learn more about Ableton. I'm currently trying to learn a bit about it and I'm using a course over at Skillshare to help me figure it out. So you can go and check it out if you want to. The first 500 uses my link gets two months for free. If we take a look here at the MIDI tracks, you can set channel, you can set bank, you can set program changes, pitch bend, aftertouch level, mod wheel, and breath control. You can also set up your controls to send CC messages as well as program changes. And all of this can of course be parameter locked per step. In this example I'm using the Base Station 2 because it's an analog synth where you still can change the patches very rapidly. So I've programmed a sequence on the Digitact which changes the patches on the Base Station 2 rapidly. This goes to show that the so-called electron workflow is actually quite powerful even for sequencing external gear. When sequencing external gear I have found two drawbacks. Firstly, that creating chords is quite annoying. Secondly, there is no way to save a preset for the external synths that you might be using. So if you made a CC setup for your synths, it's actually quite annoying to transfer that into another project. Basically, you have to create a template project for it to work. For future products, I do hope that Electron takes a page out of Novation's book and let us load presets that we have saved for the MIDI channel so that it's much easier to use with external synths. Another strength of the Digitact and the Electron workflow is actually the level of control you can have, theoretically anyway, during a live uh, situation. The control all function becomes very powerful. If you learn it well enough, you can create transitions and variations to a pattern super quickly. This is a jam session I did during the Toman Synth Reactor event, and it's just one pattern that I sort of made up on the fly, and I use Control All to create variations quickly. So here are some final words. Not everybody needs an Electron device. Not everybody will enjoy the Digits Act. If you want something that's good for creative sampling, this is a great device. But if you want a super simple drum machine, this is probably not it. Now Electron has since come out with their model samples, which is a pretty much a more beginner friendly, more hands on version of the Digitact with a lot of the features stripped. So that could be interesting to check out as well. But I would ultimately say that these devices are very rewarding if you learn the sequencer and learn uh, the Electron workflow that I've shown you in this video. But if you're not ready to do it, if you're not ready to commit, there are better options out there. So this was Bo and a little review, a two year review, almost three years review of the Digitact. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, enable the notifications. And please, if you feel like it, you can go to patreon.com slash bowbeats because that's the best way to help me make even more videos and spend even more time devoted to these synths and samplers. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.